We are in front of one of the most mythical houses in the history of Mexican cinema and culture of the 20th century. That of actor Emilio Fernandez, known by his nickname El Indio, which means the Indian in Spanish. Emilio Fernandez was born in 1904 in Mineral del Hondo, Sabinas, Coahuila, son of a Cacapu woman and a revolutionary colonel. As a child and young man, Emilio himself fought in the Mexican Revolution. Fernandez also entered the military college, where he became involved in the movement against President Alvaro Obregón, commanded by Adolfo de la Huerta in 1923, for which he was imprisoned. But he managed to escape from prison, which is why he had to flee to the United States. In the United States, Emilio worked as a laborer, longshoreman, and bricklayer. In Los Angeles, thanks to his physique and athletic condition, he became involved in the film industry, first as an extra, and then as a stunt double for silent film stars such as Douglas Fairbanks. His profile and exotic type for Hollywood filmmakers led him to be a supporting actor alongside stars such as Greta Garbo. I want to be alone. Where have you been? Mary Pickford, Gloria Swanson, and of course, Mexican actress Dolores Del Rio. What's more, Dolores' husband, Cedric Gibbons, famed film and art deco designer, asked him to pose to be the model for one of his most outstanding works, the statuette for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts Award. That is, the very Oscar itself. And the Oscar goes to... Back in Mexico at the end of the 1930s, Emilio Fernandez was one of the most outstanding artists of the period known as the Golden Age of Mexican Cinema. Together with photographer Gabriel Figueroa, he captured some of the most beautiful and emotional scenes of Mexican cinema. Mi nombre cristiano se perdió en pleitos, cárceles, penas y ausencias. From this talented team, masterpieces such as Maria Candelario, La Perla, Enamorada, Salon Mexico, and Rio Escondido stand out. Maria Felix, Dolores Del Rio, Pedro Armanderas, Jorge Negret, and his wife Columba Dominguez also starred in those films. This house was born to capture those images where Mexican nationalism, the beauty of the countryside, and the beautiful skies of the Mexican landscape were captured. Taking advantage of the volcanic remains of the millenary eruption of the Xitle volcano, architect Manuel Pera began to build the house in the 1940s. Pera and Emilio Fernandez were conceiving a construction that would pay homage to the great Mexican haciendas and at the same time would be the most beautiful movie set. The fortress house, or Casa Fuerte as it is called in Spanish, was built using volcanic stone from the nearby Pedregal and incorporating elements such as Poblano Talavera tiles, arches, vaults, staircases, windows, and balconies to evoke the imaginary Mexico that appeared in those movies. The construction evokes a fortress or fort, especially the tower, which is one of its central elements. But instead of having a defensive function, it has a cinematographic one. Another important element of the house is its garden, designed as if it were a pre-Hispanic ball game that gives the image of wanting to evoke the ancient cultures of ancient Mexico. For this reason, the central fountain is dedicated to Leluc, god of rain. And was designed and elaborated by Diego Rivera to whom we also owe several of the ornamental elements of the house. It is in this space where the ashes of Emilio Fernandez rest in a stone urn. The interior of the house is even more spectacular because El Indio asked architect Pera to specially design the halls and the staircase so that they could also be used as a scenery for his films. In fact, 
the main hall was used to film The Rapture. It was here that actress Maria Felix fell in love with Jorge Negret. Ya le dije que le iba a costar trabajo. Ni quiero sus flores, ni quiero su cosecha, ni quiero su sarape. The house was a center for show business and art in the middle of the Mexican 20th century. Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera were frequent visitors to its salons, where they lived with characters such as Dolores Del Rio, Andreas Soler, and Marga Lopez. It is in this house where the great Juan Rolfo and Jose Revueltas worked on scripts for Fernandez's movies, and where famous Hollywood stars stayed, such as John Wayne, Elizabeth Taylor, and of course, Marilyn Monroe. Men aren't attentive to girls who wear glasses. Who tasted tequila for the first time in this place. In one of the corners of the house, there is a piano from 1901, where it is said that August and Lara sat to compose the song Pecadora, which Emilio Fernandez would use in his movie, Victims of the Sin. It is the same piano where the virtuoso Arthur Rubinstein sat during his visit to Mexico to play pieces of Frederick Chopin, Fernandez's favorite musician. The film director considered the center of a home to be the dining room and the kitchen. The kitchen, decorated with beautiful Talavera tiles, evokes the traditions of Mexican cuisine. It is here that great feasts were prepared to entertain producers, actors, filmmakers, and artists who frequented the place. The dining room, known as Los Gallos, was a center of social life two paintings stand out in it. The first is a double mural portraying Columba Dominguez in typical Mexican costumes, attributed to Elizabeth Catlett, an American painter and disciple of Diego Rivera, who settled in Mexico and was a member of the Popular Graphics Workshop. The other painting portrays a pair of fighting cocks, and there is a reason for that. Fernandez was fond of fighting cocks, His favorite was a pair given to him by Fulgencio Batista, Cuban dictator. One day, Emilio told his wife Columba that some important producers were going to lunch. Columba, in a hurry, took the fighting cocks and cooked them in mole sauce. Upon discovering that his favorite roosters were now in his stomach, El Indio Fernandez burst out laughing. Therefore, he commissioned this painting to remember the episode. Before continuing with our tour, there's one last anecdote to tell. Emilio Fernandez was a man who fell in love very easily. One of the women he fell in love with was the British actress Olivia de Havilland. The Indio sent romantic love letters to the actress in an attempt to make her fall in love. But Olivia ended up falling in love with a messenger instead. To remember this failed romance, Emilio Fernandez asked the city government to rename the small street in the corner of his house Dolce Olivia, which means Sweet Olivia. 